There are two different types of annuities that we will compute in Chapter 11. One is an ordinary annuity, and so far the examples we did in Video 1 were ordinary annuities, where the repeated payments were made at the end of each payment time. An annuity due are the examples that we're going to start with on this video, and the repeated payments are made at the beginning of each time. Before I talk to you about the difference in calculation for annuity due, let me just give a brief display of what the differences are. Okay. If the top one is an, an ordinary annuity, whenever you make deposits, if this is our start, so say this is like January 1, Here's our time period one for the first payment, time period two, second payment, time period three, and then keep going, time period four, on and on and on. We're gonna make the payment at the end of the first time period. So at this time, there is no interest calculated because there's no money in the account. And then we would have our interest that calculates after that and then we'd make our second deposit, and then interest, and then a third deposit and interest, and a fourth deposit. Down here with an annuity due, the deposits are made at the beginning of the time period. So if this is our start, and we still have time period one, two, three, and four, now our money is deposited at the start of the time period instead of at the end and then we would make our deposit for each of our time periods. Okay, Here, because an annuity due, there is money at the start of the account, then in that first time period, yes, there is interest calculated. So the big difference in an annuity due and an ordinary annuity is that with an annuity due, you have this extra interest. You're not making any extra payments because if you make, um, think in one year, you would make four quarterly payments. So in the top one, your four quarterly payments would be at the end of the first quarter, end of the second, end of the third, end of the fourth. Where in the second example for annuity due, you would make your quarterly payments at the beginning, the beginning of the first quarter, beginning of the second quarter is right here, beginning of the third quarter, beginning of the fourth quarter, and so on. So you would still make the same number of payments. It's just this extra interest is calculated. How do we accommodate that? To accommodate that in an annuity due, we're going to add one to the number of periods, which is that in value. It tells us what row to look at. If you remember us calculating that in value told us how many payments we were making. Well, by increasing that to one, increasing that by one, we're adding an extra interest, but we're also adding an extra payment. So to counteract that extra payment, we subtract one payment at the end. So adding one to the end value adds an extra payment and an extra interest, which is what we need to get the extra interest. But then at the end, we counteract that by subtracting one payment. Let's go ahead and give it a, a try. In question three, we set up an investment in an annuity due. So you're looking for the word annuity due or you're also work looking for the word beginning. I really highlighted them in your guided notes here, okay? We are going to make payments of 500 every quarter. Find the amount of the annuity if you make payments for seven years and our account is 8% per year compounded quarterly. We are going to start just the same calculating I and N. Our I is our 8% divided into different quarters. So 8% divided by four quarters in a year. We're going to look at the 2% column. To calculate the N, we're going to look at quarterly for seven years. And four times seven is 28. And then we're going to add one more. So we're going to take that 28 and add one more is 29. We're going to look at row 29 and down the 2% column. So to find the amount in our account, 
we're going to have our $500 payment, and we need to look at the 2% column and row 29. Again, we added that extra one to get to row 29. And let's take that decimal back to our calculation. 38.79223. Multiplying together, we get $19,396.10. And then I'm going to write a reminder. Remember to subtract one payment because we don't want 29 payments, we want 28. So minus the $500 of one payment. And that leaves us at $18,896, excuse me, $18,896.10. That's the amount in the account. To calculate our interest only, I'm going to squeeze it in right here, our interest is the difference in the money we put in and the money we get out at the end. So the money we get out at the end is the $18,896.10. And the money we put in was 500 payments, and we did it four times a year for seven years. Our five hundred pay, $500 payment times four years times seven, excuse me, four times a year for seven years is going to give us a total of 14,000. This is the money that we invested and this is the money that's available at the end of the account. The difference in the two is the $4,896.10. And that's the interest only. Let's try one more with our annuity due. In question four, in this case, we're noticing that there was no mention of annuity due, and I still highlighted the word beginning. Now, the questions you're gonna get are not always gonna highlight that word beginning, but you're gonna be looking for it to know that it's an annuity due. And we have those extra steps of adding one to our row number and then subtracting a payment. So to find our amount, we're going to go ahead and calculate our I and our N. The I is going to be the 12% compounded monthly. So 12% divided by 12 months in a year is 1%. And then to calculate our N, we're going to have monthly, which is 12 times a year, for 15 months. So really we're looking at as 15 over 12 for 15 twelfths of a year. And our monthly is 12 times 15 twelfths. Or we could have just said there are 15 months. So we're going to make 15 payments. Okay. Remember that whenever this wasn't given to us in years, we made it into part of a year. So 15 months out of 12 months in a year is where that 15 twelfths comes in. Don't forget that we're going to add one to our N. So we're going to go to 16 for our row and the 1% column. The amount of our annuity is going to be our $150 deposit going to row 16 down the 1% column we're going to take that decimal and bring it back to our calculation. 17.25786. And when we multiply, we're going to get $2,588.68. And then we have to subtract one payment. And our payment in this case is $150. So the amount in our account 
is $2,438.68. To find our interest, we need to compare the amount that was put in the bank in the account and the amount that came out at the end. So our $2,438.68 is the amount at the end, and we're going to subtract the $150 payments 12 times a year for 15 twelfths of a year. Or again, you can just reduce that to say that you did that, um, you made your $150 payment for 15 payments. Multiplying $150 times 15 payments, I get $2,250. So again, $2,250 is what was deposited into the annuity account, but the bank account has a total of $2,438.68. So the interest is the difference, the $188.68.